it's me, Krista. Welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, if not, welcome for the very first time to my little art corner here on YouTube. Today we are doing prompt number five for Inktober 2019. That prompt is build. I am going to apologize right now. My camera cut out during part of the sketching recording process, so there are going to be little bits missing. I apologize. I fixed it as soon as I noticed what was happening. But back to that prompt of build. For some reason, my brain kept going to science fiction kind of things and a little bit of horror. My first thought was to do a drawing of Frankenstein's creature in the lab while it was being built or doing the head detached and then as though it was being attached at the point. I decided that was too complicated and moved on from that idea. Then I started thinking about robots and thinking about famous robots in film. Thought about Daleks, thought about C-3PO. But then I remembered the robot that C-3PO's design was based off of. The robot from Metropolis. The first version of Metropolis I saw was the anime version of the film that came out in 2001. I remember my grandmother and I rented it and I saw it. And I loved it. I loved the animation and I loved the story. A little later, while the film was still in public domain, I watched that version of it. That version had a lot of scenes missing. I found out more recently that they recovered some of those scenes. They found film reels in Argentina that have the missing parts. I believe it has been cut together at some point. I do know it is under copyright law again. It is copyrighted, and that story itself is amazing. If you guys want to look that up, I would recommend it. It's fascinating. For a long time, certain parts of this film were a mystery, and now, not so mysterious anymore. And the film itself has had a large impact on all following sci-fi films. As I previously said, C-3PO, the design, is based off of the design of this robot here that I am trying to draw. I decided I wanted to take a crack at doing this design. For some reason I thought this was less complicated than the Frankenstein idea. I was probably wrong. Now that I've rambled about a little bit of film history, specifically in science fiction films, maybe I should be talking about the actual drawing process? Maybe? Maybe. This is a 4x6 piece of paper. It is the toned blue mixed media paper from Strathmore. The first thing I did, which I've been doing a lot for my drawings and paintings recently, is using a ruler to find the midlines of the paper. I use a ruler and from the diagonal sections of the paper, I draw a line from the opposite sections to meet each way and then where they meet in the middle the X marks the spots. I also use the ruler to draw straight lines horizontally and vertically. It helps me figure out compositionally where I want to put stuff when I know where the exact middle of the paper or canvas is. I also used a similar process when I was drawing the chest area of the robot. I drew two boxes where it seemed that the chest area where the sternum would basically be where they would meet. And within these rough boxes, I drew diagonal lines, basically meeting each edge of the box and then drew something in the middle. And you can also use this method to create a better circle. It's good for placement, and it's helpful when you're doing perspective drawings too, which I'm still terrible at perspective. By the way, these methods don't work for everybody. This is something I learned in a class, and it works for me. For this drawing, I wanted to basically just use markers. I didn't want to use the liquid ink like I had been. I'd been doing very tonal, soft, almost watercolor ink paintings, and then going over it with the markers. For this one, I wanted to just use black 
and white markers because I'm trying to do something that's very detailed on such a small piece of paper, I thought this method would work better. Also, it reminds me of old school sci-fi and horror comic books. And I wanted that kind of pulpy feel to come into this drawing. I also just wanted to play with different techniques. What's the point of taking on a project like Inktober if you aren't going to play around with the media I do recommend if you're going to be doing a lot of small lines like this, if you have a compression glove, you should probably wear it. I have one somewhere. I couldn't find it before starting this one. And I figured, hey man, I can handle it. No, I needed to wear my compression glove. My hand hurts. And it hurts because of the small, tiny little motions of doing the individual lines for shading. I used two black markers for this project. One is a fine tip Kiritake marker. I honestly don't know what kind of marker. It just has a fine little slightly flexible tip. It does not say exactly what kind of Kiritake it is. It just says it's made in Japan. The other marker I ended up using is a Tombow double ended marker. One of the calligraphy type ones. I still have one of these. It's not my favorite marker to use, but I figured I should use them for Inktober so I can use it up and be done with it. I could have also done this project with just the one black marker and then pulling in a white marker. Any dual ended brush marker that has a fine tip would have worked for this. For the highlights, I alternate between a white Posca pen that has a thicker nib and then a white gel pen because of how tiny it is. Once again, I've been using different tips to get different effects. I wanted some tiny tips to get some tiny lines because for some reason I just needed to go detail crazy with this one. I also intentionally left some of the tone of the paper showing. I wanted that to be the medium tone for this piece. It's just going to be simple, three tones, black, the blue of the paper, and then white. If I were to do this project again, I would do it on a larger piece of paper just so I can get everything a little bit more accurate because of how small this paper is. I did have to exaggerate certain things like the pupils of the eyes and other small details just aren't as great as they could have been if I would have chosen a larger piece of paper. The arm that's furthest away from the viewer, in case you have not noticed, it is mostly black with just little insinuations of it being there with some white and a little bit of the gray. That is what it looks like in the reference photo, and that is why I did it here. I love using silent films, and not just silent films, any films. The lighting in there is such a great way for artists to study how light works. It's a great way to figure out how to get the deep darks you need and the bright whites you need. And to understand how lighting is used in film, and then they can be used in your paintings to evoke certain moods. Lighting in a lot of movies is not afraid to bump up that contrast to make an impact. And artists, likewise, should not be afraid to do the same thing. This point of the drawing, I was deciding for some reason that I hated the face. I thought the pupils needed to be smaller. I changed them to being larger again because even though it's inaccurate for the photo reference, because this is such a small drawing, it helps the impact of the drawing itself. Sometimes you have to exaggerate that stuff, especially in smaller pieces, to make it more visible and readable to the viewer. So far I've been having a lot of fun with Inktober. I've been having fun playing around with the media. I don't use ink in this way a lot, so it's a good way to kind of stretch those skills. I've also had a lot of fun with the prompts and seeing where they lead the creativity to go to. Is anyone else doing Inktober? 
Are you guys having fun doing the projects? What kind of media have you been using and what have you been doing for the prompts? Let me know in that comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you guys if you're doing the challenge and if so, what you're taking from it. At this point in the drawing, I decided the background was just too black and that there was just too much emptiness going on. So I went over with that white Posca pen to just add a little bit of texture. The way I did it also brings your view to the robot a little bit more. And the lines almost elongate what I have here a tiny bit more. This project here is pretty much done. The finished drawing will be popping up any moment now. If you liked this video, please feel free to hit that like button. If you have any comments, questions, feelings, or concerns, let me know in that comment section down below. If you want to see more videos like this, especially during Inktober, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day or night to spend this time here with me and to listen to me ramble about art and about m movies, apparently. Apparently that's a thing now, at least in this video. <laughs> Once again, thank you. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day or night. Bye, guys.